Hi, this is 7 July 2012 and I'm Madhusudan Raj back again with my weekend investigation of the major economic events that took place in India in last week. So this week we are going to begin with the Indian industry people and their economic understanding or basically lack of understanding which they basically demonstrated in a couple of news you know, uh, why are there a couple of demands which they are asking governments to fulfill so for example i begin with uh, this uh, news of retrieving black money uh, by fiki the federation of indian chambers of commerce and industry so the fiki people are saying that retrieving black money from abroad could be one of the solution to bring economic back on track so as you can see that uh, nothing can be farther from the truth than this particular statement from the Fiki bringing back the corruption money so-called black money is not going to revive the economy it's not going to put the economy back onto the track because you have to understand that the economy will be back on the track only when the government stop meddling with the economy they stop all their interventions the RBI stops printing money, stop manu manipulating the market interest rate via their bankrupt policies and open market operations and CR cuts and many other you know, uh, instruments when the government will stop the different kind of plans, when the government will stop their spending and allow the economy to recover on its own, only then the economy will be back on track. Bringing back this so-called black money this so-called fiat paper currencies from abroad is only going to result into you know inflation into the Indian economy because what is going to happen is it is just going to increase the purchasing power of people you know without any increase in production so on one side people will have more purchasing power in their hand and the other side production is not increasing so it is only going to result into higher prices of different goods and services or basically and more uh, correctly, if we say that it will lower the purchasing power of uh, fiat currency rupee. So, bringing back the black black money is not going to help the economy. If you there is only one you know way of uh, uh, bringing the economy back on track, and that is to allow the free market capitalism system to function, to allow people to save, to allow people to invest their savings and accumulate capital, and that will only increase the future income as I'm time and again saying without this process taking place the economy is not going to come on you know back on track it's not going to resume on its normal course second thing uh, second economic uh, you know kind of absurdity comes from the SOCHAM uh, SOCHAM is saying that they are looking to uh, towards RBI they want RBI to cut the CRR the credit reserve ratio again as i said the industry people they think that the whole problem is just lack of money supply but it's not like that in fact there is a lot of money being printed by rbi and that is what is creating all these main investments and booms and bust cycles so we don't need more money printing from rbi that is going to create more problems that is going to create more new booms and as Ludwig von Mises said, as Rothbard said, as Hayek said, all these booms are ultimately going to result into a lot of bars. You know, it's boom will always end up with you know recession, and recession is a correctionary process. Boom is a problem. Recession is never a problem. So if they don't allow this recession to run its natural course and liquidate all these main investments, then economy is not going to back you know come back on track this cutting CR ratio is not going to help anyone maybe it will happen in the short run but in the long run you know industry is going to be in trouble recession is going to be there because of male investment then Montek Singh Ahluwalia the uh, vice chairman of Indian planning commission is saying that 9% growth unlikely for next five years well, I'll say that 9% growth is uh, unlikely as long as Montek, Aluwalia, and Lon Monsi and other politicians are manipulating into the market process. You know, as long as these people are existing, as long as the government is existing, market is not, you know, economy is not going to revive. You know, nothing is going to uh, improve or better. You know, he's saying that. I see the problem with these people, this politician, is they keep on you know, uh, throwing these numbers 9%, 8%, 5%, 6%.
It just doesn't really matter if you really understand what GDP is. GDP itself is a fault, you know, faulty Keynesian concept, this national income concept with where they aggregate all the goods and services being produced into an economy in one year and then multiply it with its given prices and then they say that, well, this monetary figure is the total income, is the economy basically. Uh, economic growth of country that is not economic growth money printing is not economic growth right it is only just showing what kind of inflation you are having into the economy the real economic growth will only take place when production is going to increase and the prices are going to come down the real sign of a growing economy is price deflation when prices of goods and services of economic goods are falling that's the real sign of a growing economy, a progressing economy, as long as that is not happening, that is not happening, it is not growth, and it's not going to happen because for these people, price decline is a sign of deflation, and the more the moment prices start to go down, they think that well, it's deflation, let's print money, let's try to stabilize the price. This whole price stabilization policy is basically instabilizing, unstabilizing everything. All right, the next thing is that. The government has reduced uh, or better given 1% subsidy on the home loans up to 15 lakh. The government when is they announced 1% interest subsidy on housing loan up to 15 lakh to give a boost to low cost housing projects in the country. This is nothing but creating another housing bubble or basically adding into the already going on housing bubble in India. You know, as you have seen from my, you know, uh, short documentary video that the Indian real estate market is in a huge bubble. All the metropolitan city and even the second tier city like my hometown Surat is experiencing a huge bubble in the real estate market. The prices are skyrocket high. You know, most of the apartments are empty and resources are being mail invested into this sector on a very large scale. The government is thinking this is not enough, so they are going to create one more and they're going to fuel one more bubble into the real estate sector by giving this kind of subsidies on it, you know, interest rate up to 15 lakh. It's not going to help anyone. This is just going to create one more real estate bubble or it is already prolonging when the real interest rate will start to go up and they will go up in the end this whole real estate bubble and many other asset bubbles are going to bust and the real pay will come there uh, the also the secretary uh, of uh, department of economic affairs joint secretary thomas matthew told the indian industry people to shun pessimism and believe in themselves and start improving the economy now you have to understand is that uh, uh, mr matthew doesn't doesn't get it that it's not about pessimism or optimism the problems are there are structural fundamental you know uh falls in the economy mal investment has taken place because of the rbi's uh, lowering of market interest rates are artificially so that's the reason why business people are you know, feeling a lot of pessimism about the future, you know, as I said in my last video analysis also that, you know, this is regime uncertainty, as Robert Hicks said, so this regime uncertainty is being created by the government itself, so there is nothing like pessimism is coming out of blue somewhere, it has a cause, and the cause is in government's lunatic economic policies, so Mr. Uh, Joint Secretary, if, if you stop manipulating, interfering into the market process, then this pessimism will go on its own. You know, business people will start investing again if you stop, you know, manipulating interest rate and many other prices. So it's not a problem of pessimism or animal spirit, right? It's, it's even if it is there, there is underlying fundamental cause in the in poor farmers, poor structure of the whole economy. There is another big problem going on, as I also mentioned in my last analysis, that this year the monsoon is, you know, a lot of, you know, is in trouble around. The rain is something like already 30-40% less than what is expected from this monsoon. And India is, uh, is you know, pr uh, primarily an uh, agricultural economy, which heavily depends on monsoon rain. So, on one side the rain is not coming, and on the other side, as this news is saying, the crops, you know, they are rotting in, you know, uh, government's uh, reserves. So this uh, food corporation of India, it has huge reserves of wheat, and nobody is eating that, 
eating those you know results nobody's using those reads now again as i said this problem you know arises because of government central planning of this whole agricultural sector they give this minimum support prices to different kind of crops and they they allow investment into some sector and they don't allow investment into other sector and because of that what happens is uh, central planning is allocating resources where it's not actually needed so wheat is being produced which is not in demand right and on the other side many other crops are not produced which are in demand so when this price system is not allowed to function freely this kind of uh, misallocation of resources are going to take place so if you want to solve this problem you know if you want this you know crops not to rot then we have to again remove this manual this handle planning completely and let the free market forces of demand and supply work in the agricultural sector basically price will the system of profit and loss the system of prices will basically allocate resources so if, if the consumers are demanding more wheat farmers will cultivate more wheat if the consumers are demanding more potatoes they will cultivate more potatoes if the consumers are demanding less of the garlic then farmers will stop producing garlic and the price system the profit loss system will automatically adjust the demand uh, adjust the supply according to the given demand so this whole wastage of our resources and many people are going hungry on the other side this crop is rotting it will never take place if free market forces are allowed to work government stops mainly into the agricultural sector on the other side the power scenario also is getting weaker and grimmer and grimmer day by day you know many of the power companies are having only you know weeks you know reserve of coal and that again is you know, is because of the virtual you know, not virtual monopoly of coal india the state run corporation has over the coal mines in india so they are they are inefficient inept they have a monopoly over the coal mines in india so they are not producing enough coal and the demand is artificially being increased you know is increasing because the government is again printing a lot of money so people have a lot of purchasing power they are demanding more and more power supply which is not being produced by this inefficient power you know generating companies power distributing companies and as i said the coal india has a monopoly over the coal supply and coal reserves so again if you dismantle this whole monopoly of government on the coal sector and energy sector then there are no problems you know private sector companies are working for profit they will find out energy resources from anywhere in the world they will use all kind of technologies to fulfill the demands of their consumers but as long as they are not allowing this profit and loss system to function we are going to face this power shortages you know daily we have one or two hours you know power you know cut in in my city also in my home also if this is going to continue and it's going to worsen in the future now, suppose something goes wrong in the middle east there is some kind of war then it's really going to create a lot of trouble in india's energy sector on the other side government is also giving a lot of subsidies you know they gave 140 billion rupees as subsidies to oil retailers these are all state run oil companies petrol company bpcl and spcl so on the one side government is saying that deregulating the petrol prices but they're fooling people nothing is deregulated all the major petroleum companies are being run by the state so again government's meddling is creating all this high prices that is as i said inflation and lack of petrol supply they're huge gas reserves and petroleum reserves being found all over the world but again all the nation states you know national governments are in control of all these you know resources that's the reason why we are facing all these problems uh india also announced in the health sector something worrying is taking place they are saying that they are going to give free medicine to hundreds of millions of people I have to understand that there there is no free lunch in the market. So when government says it is free, taxpayers are going to foot the bill actually. And not only that, when government says free or something is going for free, the demand will you know increase you know astronomically. And what is going to happen is it's going to create a lot of scarcity. So people are going to pay for these medicines by staying in queues. So what is going to happen? They have to spend more time in getting all these queues. The lines will be longer and longer. And not only that, poor people are going to left out of all this thing. Those people who are well connected with the politician, they will basically go and get all this free medicine. Again, over here, the answer is not 
government providing all this medicine and everything. Again, answer is in free market capitalism. If you allow free market to work, then there will be many pharmaceutical companies. They will not have their own monopoly. Only few pharmaceutical companies are having licenses and monopolies. Uh, IP laws, copyrights, patents and all this, not copyrights, patents and everything. So what's going to happen? Because of that, the price goes up. You know, price increases because of this monopoly situation. But if there is free market, there will be many competing pharmaceutical firms and that will bring down the cost, that will improve the quality of all this medicine and ultimately the real customer, the uh, the uh, poor guy, the rich guy, everybody, you know, market caters to all the segment of the economy. So they all will be basically sold by the pharmaceutical company and then instead of serving their government masters right now. Last but not least, last week also government uh, uh, textbook panel uh, said that uh, all the text, all the school, public school textbooks should delete cartoons against politicians and bureaucrats. So you, you can see that this is nothing but pure brainwashing going on inside the classroom. So these politicians and bureaucrats, they can wreck our life, they can, you know, ruin our life. They don't, as I said, they're gangs of crim, gang of criminals. So they can basically do whatever they want with our life, but we cannot even say a single thing against them. So even if we, you know, make some kind of cartoons against these politicians and bureaucrats and they don't allow it, you know, then that's the biggest game, you know, that people should not see through this government propaganda that politicians and bureaucrats are very benevolent people and they are there for people's help. The reality is completely different from that. They are not there for common man's health, they are there for their own self-interest, they are as self as selfish as you know any individual is. So they are there to make their own life better, not our life better. So but anyways, deleting this kind of cartoons is you know it's not gonna stop this information from spreading all over the world because now we are you know we are witnessing the internet revolution like the Gutenberg press revolution took place in the Renaissance time. Now this internet revolution is going to spread this information quickly and it is going to expose the state, it is going to expose all these politicians and bureaucrats. It's going to ultimately, you know, throw open the true nature, you know, as a parasitic class, you know, in front of the society. And when that will happen, when public opinion will change, then the state will go. And when the state will go, only then our situation will improve. Before that, nothing is going to, you know, change for better. Alright, so I'm just wrapping up today. I'll come back again next week for uh, with more news. Thank you very much for watching me.